Africa's most industrialized country, South Africa. It's going eight to 10 hours without electricity. 600 million people around this continent have no access to electricity. It is not just a luxury issue. It is a human rights issue. Climate change and energy poverty are two sides of the same coin. They have to be dealt with both, both. And this can be done well. And how do we fix this? We can fast track on how we walk away from coal or slow down on coal, but not now, because with eight hours a day with no electricity, you need coal. And you cannot rely on intermittent energy sources. Base load, people, base load. That's what we need right now in Africa. We need base load energy. Europeans and Americans can walk away from fossil fuels because they already have base load. They can introduce fancy solar or wind. We have nothing. Where are we transitioning to, from? From the dark to the dark? You can't breathe clean air in the dark. Nobody wants that in Africa. People want lights and they want base loads. Unfortunately, it's not a homogenized either call it system or, or life standards, if you will. And therefore, I think our response cannot be homogenized. If, if we are working on investing into renewable energy and hydrogen and maybe converting from baseload into more intermittent resources in North America, maybe it's a doable, workable solution. That does not necessarily mean that we can take this and extrapolate into it everywhere in the world and say, this is the homogenized answer that's going to solve all our problems everywhere, right? So I think we have to look at it region by region and, and take all those observations, valid observations and concerns our colleagues shared during this call into account while formulating our answers and, and, and roadmap, if you will. Um, and so what Africa really needs, and, and this is coming out across all the studies, um, is that we need access to modern energy. Um, and, and it's become quite clear that, you know, if we transition recklessly, uh, to a low carbon economy, uh, we will be in a situation where we've put our energy security at risk. Um, and, and one of the key things also that, that has come out is that, you know, unfortunately, and then when you look across the world, um, uptake in renewable energy hasn't translated uh, to lower energy prices, uh, especially in the house, at the household level. So this is something that uh, keeps coming up. Uh, and so our you know, transition should definitely not be uh, exacerbating the issues of, of poverty and, and inequality. And the problem at heart is almost every energy solution that we have today, whether it is renewable electricity, whether it is hydrocarbons, whether it is wood, is that it can't address this trilemma of making sure that energy is available, that it's reliable, that it's affordable, and that's environmentally sustainable and is available for all. And this ability to move energy from point A to point B will continue to be a challenge, even in the utopian future of an all renewable energy perspective. So capacity and growth are going to be big factors as we go forward. Uh, how do we grow capacity? How do we grow things across the world? How do we do this in a distributed way? Uh, and, uh, and yet find ways to have those equitable jobs that are available around the world. And for anybody who thinks that there is a finite global solution to this problem, that is a big mistake. We're going to have continual changes in the energy transition or the energy world as we speak.